now, uh, who was the biggest ANW operator in Canada. And this was one of his managers that wanted to get out and get into his own business. And we went together, and I put up 10, and he put up 5, and away we went. And it was a lot of fun. Business boom for A&W, and soon two other Saskatoon locations were up and running. Dog and Suds also had three locations going, and its popularity took off like a rocket. We had 30% increase almost year per year. You know, it was just phenomenal. Dog and Suds in Saskatoon was the highest volume in North America. And oddly enough, uh, Lloyd Quist and Harvey Smith was involved at the time. They had about the busiest A and W, and it was only because we're both promoting. You know, we're trying to outdo each other, and, and of course, when you do that, I think you're giving people value and so on. You know, so that's how the business picked up all the time. It was competition between two drive-in restaurants with the same mainstays: burgers and root beer. From our viewpoint, uh, definitely was a competitor, but it also proved up one thing that 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 sometimes if you can't beat them, join them. And I think that was, that was Peter's philosophy. Um, if, you, if you're an island unto yourself, then you have to do all the, have all the drawing power to be able to attract clients. But if you give them an alternative and get them out there in their cars, which, which happened in droves in the 50s, that there was spin-off for all of us. Like when we first started, you know, there was uh, a few cars came, and then more cars came, and then as more operations opened, like uh, Dog and Suds and A and W and uh, McDonald's and all these places opened, it just simply drew more people out. The Nighthawk and later the Dog and Suds were right next door to the El Rancho. That created more of a draw to the area, but Peter Golf and Joe Young gained in other ways too. We used to help each other. You'd run out of certain parts of food and you'd, uh, you'd help them, and if we got out, they'd help us. You know, run short of change, you go over there, and if there's short of change, you come see us. No, it was a good feeling. There was never, never any hard feelings, and they're still easy today. Peter Golf and I are very good friends. Peter Golf began offering franchises for dog and suds in other Canadian cities. By 1962, there were 12 to 14 in Canada. In North America, about 400. Meanwhile, at the El Rancho, business was so good that more space had to be added year after year. In six years, we added six pieces on, so it became quite a nice little spot. After about six years or so, we decided that uh, we were going to put up a, a really nice big operation, and uh, Patrick Construction built us a very, very nice big restaurant, and we had 17 stalls through the drive through which was uh, unheard of. You know, most people had one or two stalls. So we were running two and a half, three cars a minute through that window. To Joe Young's knowledge, his was the first in Canada to use speakers. Hitting an order this new way might have been efficient, but the personal touch was lost. Car hops would be missed. Around 1970, the Youngs were all ready to erect another building and put a single item on the menu, Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken. In which uh, the process seals in all the natural juices and uh, that added to the fact that we use nine to ten week old broilers uh, just gives you about the best dang finger licking chicken I think you could ever hope to eat. Introducing the world's newest, silliest, and hamburger eating as clown, Ronald McDonald. It soon would be time for Ronald McDonald to join the party. Ronald And mop. Ronald McDonald was a latecomer to Saskatchewan. In 1967, the first Canadian McDonald's opened in Richmond, B.C., and it wasn't until 1970 that the Golden Arches appeared in Saskatoon. By then, too late for drive-ins, it was drive-through. It was a new chapter in fast food and strong competition. At that time, we couldn't afford to buy the most expensive properties in, uh, in Saskatoon, so uh, it, we had to be very careful the location that we picked. And we picked this location not only from the point of view that it would, it would be good going in because we knew the volume was there, but over the long pull it was going to continue to be better and better and better as every year went by. Uh, and then we ended up building Wildwood, uh, which also accommodates uh, the traffic here. 
McDonald's may have been a formidable competitor, but what about those two original fast food pioneers on the strip? They had some new ideas to keep them in the game. It was always a dream of Joe Young to build a large, fine dining restaurant. In 1979, he opened a dining establishment styled after a grain elevator and using a prairie antique theme. The granary has since been rebuilt and put further back on the lot to allow for further development of the property. Daughter Debbie and her husband Remy manage the granary through their own company, Concept Foods. And back at El Rancho Food Services head office. It was a lot of hard work in that. You know, it was uh, tough, but when you, when you like what you're doing and satisfying the people, we had so many people come and we had to get food out to them that you didn't have time to get tired. Today, sons Ron, Ken, Gord, and daughter Kathy run the family KFC business. They operate six franchises in rural locations in Saskatchewan, six in Saskatoon, and one in Manitoba. Peter Golf, the entrepreneur who started to build his success on hamburgers in a small shack 44 years ago, is still into hamburgers and on the same site on 8th Street. Still hamburgers, still the same location, but there the similarity ends. Just when Peter Golf thought he had done enough in restaurants for a lifetime, a friend told him about something brand new, Fuddruckers. My friend Bill made it sound so good, you know, he says, Peter, you, miss, you don't you have to see it. We drive to buildings, you know, and I walk in and I see this place, you know, it looks so different. And you know, I've never seen anything like it before. So uh, I said, I have to do one more. <laughs> And after 40 years, Emma continues to run her DQ on its original 8th Street site. And the A&W man, Harvey Smith, is semi-retired in BC. There was very little on 8th Street until the drive-in scene. And that was sort of the catalyst that got 8th Street going. I would say for sure the drive-ins played a big role. And it wasn't interesting period of time that I recall of the, the cars, it was the strip to be on. Geez, I never thought that place would ever go. I thought, you know, nobody's going to come out there and sit in their cars. But boy, they, they did. Mm -hmm. 